let's say you're building a wizard to create a new user through some type of screen and you know that you want a to store the favorite city of a particular user in a variable. And so you could say it's a string, right? Now by default, if we can't just leave this uninitialized, we're gonna get an error here that says the property must be initialized. And so we could say uh, empty string. Now that would work. So what we could say here is when we print this to the screen, we might wanna say, you know, so say Don Felker's favorite city is, and then we'd print the favorite city and so forth. We could print the favorite city. So let's go back to the main file here. And inside of here, what we could say is user, we'll create the new user and we'll print this, the user to the screen. And when we print it, we'll see Don Felker's favorite city is blank. But now, however, this isn't really useful. Kotlin does provide us with the ability to say like, hey, um, I know I'm gonna need a variable and I, I know that I need it populated, but but I kind of know that it's not gonna be populated just yet. So just go ahead and trust me. I'm going to initialize this thing, uh, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do it in right away. This, so basically as soon as this variable, its property has been de de declared, uh, I'm not, it's not ready to use. And I'm telling Colin, hey, that's okay because I'm, I'm going to initialize it later at some point. But let's assume for some reason that I don't initialize it. So what's gonna happen here when we call the two string method? Let's go back to the main file. So we haven't told Kotlin about the favorite city at all. Now, if we run this again, what we're going to notice is we're going to get Kotlin blows up here and it throws an uninitialized property access exception. And it says that the late init property of my favorite city has not been initialized. So Kotlin's basically letting us know like, hey, you told me that you were going to initialize favorite city at some point before you used it. However, you tried to use it down here on user line eight, which we're on here. You used it down here and it wasn't initialized. Uh, we're not allowing that to happen. We're going to blow up and Kotlin throws the uninitialized property access exception. So now the nice thing here is it's easy to fix. So this allows me some kind of some safety to know that my application is working correctly, that I've actually initialized this because I do need a favorite city. I do need it populated and I want it to blow up if it doesn't. So now I say user favorite city and I could say, let's go ahead and go with it. You know, Newark is a great place. So let's put Newark and then we'll hit run. And uh, that's not really my favorite city, but um, we have Don Felger's favorite city is Newark. Now we don't get it blowing up anymore. So I could even I could even set this to an empty string. That's fine as well. But now at least that's been initialized. I've told Kotlin like, hey, uh, I could say Minneapolis, which is one of my favorite cities. And it will print off here. So we'll see Minneapolis and we'll see it's populated. So that's one way that you can do it with a late initialized property inside of your application. This could be a string, it could be another object, it could be anything of that nature. You're basically telling Kotlin, hey, I'm going to need a some type of variable um, that I don't know what it is yet, but I do need it populated before I can use it. So I'm not gonna initialize it here, it's just gonna be initialized later, so late init. So it's late initialization, so just if I don't initialize it, blow up. Now, one important thing, if we say, hey, well, this is a mutable property, I don't want it to be mutable. Well, if we try that, what we'll notice here is we get this error that says the late init modifier is only allowed on mutable properties. And well, if we think about that, the reason why is because we have to mutate it as soon as, as it, whenever we want to change it. So uh, it has to be a mutable variable. Uh, otherwise it would be defined immediately. So as soon as it's defined, if this were this way, of course, we're gonna get an error, but if we were to define this as you know NYC, it would work just fine. But since we are using late init, it has to be a var. And that's how you can define a late init and use it in Kotlin.